Meanwhile, the discovery of a new exoplanet has astronomers excited that it could be indeed signs of life. Do we now have neighbors in the cosmos? To date, Earth is home to the only known form of life in the universe. However, we are actively searching. In the latest effort to find intelligent life beyond Earth, researchers have begun to peer inward toward the Milky Way's nucleus. Is there life elsewhere in the universe? This comes with a sardonic caveat. There is no agreed upon concept of life itself. However, we may not require one. We now have a better idea of what to look for if we ever find signs of life in an exoplanet's atmosphere. An astonishing change of events has resulted in the discovery of a mysterious interstellar radio signal that has reached Earth. Could these periodic transmissions from a massive exoplanet be some kind of alien greeting? Is it possible that there are advanced aliens in the universe? Join us as we explore how NASA warns that a huge exoplanet in space has started sending Earth signals. In 2021, when the James Webb Space Telescope was launched, scientists received their first look into the composition of the atmospheres of Earth-sized exoplanets. Webb, or a comparable spacecraft in the future, might be able to detect telltale indicators of an atmosphere similar to Earth's, with elements like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and methane, a very promising sign of potential life. The process of photosynthesis, by which plants convert light into chemical energy, could be detected by telescopes of the future, as could gases or compounds indicating the presence of animal life. A similar level of air pollution to that of Earth may be produced by intelligent, sophisticated life, making it visible from great distances. Of course, we might only be able to come up with a rough probability estimate. Still, finding an exoplanet where the likelihood of life is, say 95%, would be a historic breakthrough. It's possible that life could be discovered nearby, such as on the ocean floor of Europa, Jupiter's moon, or beneath the surface of Mars. If we're really lucky, we might even be able to listen in on the conversations of alien cultures. Possibly we will be able to record techno-signatures or indications of technological use. Without these lucky breaks, however, the task at hand will be far more challenging. The key will be light, specifically light scattered by the atmospheres of exoplanets and decomposed into a rainbow spectrum that can be scanned like a barcode. Transit spectroscopy is a technology that could be used to identify the various gases and compounds in the atmospheres of these worlds, including those necessary for life. They live in the boiling hot springs of Yellowstone National Park, the freezing cold valleys of Antarctica, and the steaming vents at the bottom of the ocean and they come from different evolutionary lines than our own, which diverged billions of years ago. Those organisms known as extremophiles are able to survive and even thrive in settings that would be lethal to most others. They may stand in for alien life forms on faraway planets. The number of exoplanets, or planets orbiting stars other than our own, in the Milky Way galaxy is likely in the trillions. The habitable zone is a useful notion for astronomers since it defines the range of a planet's orbit around a star within which liquid water could exist on the surface of the planet. Planets would need to be the right size, have the right atmosphere, and orbit a star that doesn't frequently release sterilizing flares, among other things. Identifying planets that are within the habitable zone is simply a starting step in determining whether or not they are likely to support life. In addition, for decades, scientists have been receiving pulses of a mysterious radio wave from outer space, but they have been unable to determine where the signal is coming from. Every 20 minutes or so, and occasionally for as long as 5 minutes at a period, the unusual blasts of energy have occurred over the past 35 years. This is what the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research ICRAR at Curtin University found. Scientists have been left perplexed by the discovery of the signal, dubbed GPMJ1839010. The signal, which is assumed to have originated about 15,000 light years from Earth, has been intermittently broadcasting for a duration of time that defied all logic. Neutron stars and magnetars are among the most exotic and extreme things in the cosmos, and this unique object challenges our knowledge of them. Using data collected in 2018, astronomers discovered a second magnetar with a far slower spin rate and similar signal intervals of 18 minutes, 
It was still sending out radio waves when the data was evaluated in 2020, although Hurley Walker claims it stopped doing so. They restarted their search with confidence that they would locate yet another persistent radio emitter. Astronomers scanned the Milky Way once every three nights over the course of several months using the Murchison Wide Field Array radio telescope in Western Australia. They didn't have to look very hard to discover their goal. A fresh source was found in a different section of the sky almost immediately, with the same five-minute pulses occurring at 22-minute intervals. The researchers found out that the source's pulse was first observed in 1988 by studying records at the Very Large Array in New Mexico, which has the longest-running archive of data. Even more concerning than the fact that this radio signal evaded detection for over three decades is the fact that its nature remains a mystery to scientists. Could this be evidence for life beyond Earth? Hold on a second. Don't immediately conclude that extraterrestrials are attempting to make contact with our planet via telephone. There are other possibilities that researchers have considered. The possibility of alien intelligence as the sender of the signal is intriguing. In fact, when the first pulsar was discovered, astronomers initially thought it might be the work of extraterrestrial life, thus they dubbed it LGM 1 inch for Little Green Men 1, before concluding otherwise. Scientists believe that pulsars, neutron stars that rotate and blink like lighthouses while producing powerful beams, are to blame. However, pulsars age, and their pulses weaken until they cease emitting radio waves altogether. Even more perplexing is the fact that the object researchers have spotted looks like a pulsar, yet spins at a rate 1,000 times slower. The object could be an ultra-long period magnetar, an incredibly rare sort of neutron star with extraordinarily strong magnetic fields that can release massive bursts of energy, according to researchers. However, the report claims that all previously discovered magnetars released energy at intervals of a few seconds to a few minutes, which is significantly more frequent than the 22-minute intervals at which this object produces radio waves. According to the research, magnetars only emit radio waves for a few months before quitting completely, not for 35 years and counting. Observations contradict the expectation that radio emissions are decreasing over time. In fact, experts say it shouldn't be able to generate any radio waves at all. Its rotation rate is so low that it is below the death line, the point at which a star's magnetic field is too feeble to produce radio emissions. The scientists said more observations and research are needed to figure out what's causing the unexplained pulse. The mechanisms responsible for this are very remarkable. This discovery adds to a long list of unexplained phenomena discovered beyond the influence of Earth's gravity. Recent findings from Sandia National Laboratories, where solar-powered balloons were used to record unexplained sounds in the stratosphere, have been deemed anomalous. And in January, the James Webb Space Telescope at NASA found an extrasolar planet with Earth-like characteristics. The exoplanet and its star are 12 light-years from Earth, yet astronomers have detected a recurring radio signal from them. Indications from the signal point to the presence of a magnetic field and possibly even an atmosphere on the Earth-like planet. The magnetic field of Earth deflects the solar wind of charged particles and plasma, keeping the atmosphere safe for the life that depends on it. If extrasolar planets are found to have atmospheres, this may indicate the existence of habitable worlds beyond our solar system. During studies with the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array of Telescopes in New Mexico, scientists detected powerful radio waves originating from the star YZ SETI and the rocky exoplanet that surrounds it, dubbed YZ SETI B. Scientists think the radio signal originated from the planet's magnetic field interacting with the star. Planets with magnetic fields can protect their atmospheres from being gradually depleted and worn away by particles that escape from the star and strike the planet. When and why do radio waves get so powerful? The researchers concluded that the radio waves would need to be extremely powerful in order to be picked up here on Earth. Whether or not an atmosphere can persist on a planet is related to the planet's magnetic field strength. Exoplanets with sizes comparable to Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system, have been identified to have magnetic fields. Magnetic fields are basically invisible, making it more challenging to detect them on smaller planets the size of Earth. We're trying to figure out a way to make contact with them. We want to find Earth-sized planets that orbit extremely close to their stars. These planets are much too close to their stars to be habitable, 
Yet due to their proximity, the planet is essentially driving through debris that is being ejected from the star. The star will let out strong radio waves if the planet's magnetic field plows through enough of the star's material. YZ SETI B completes an orbit around its star in under two Earth days. Mercury, meanwhile, takes only 88 Earth days to complete one round around the Sun, making its orbit the shortest in our solar system. Plasma from YZ SETI B's star collides with the planet's magnetic field, is reflected by it, and then interacts with the star's magnetic field as the planet whips around. Strong radio waves that can be detected on Earth are produced and emitted as a result of all of these intense interactions. To calculate the planet's magnetic field strength, scientists analyzed the radio waves they picked up. This is providing us with novel insights into the conditions seen in stellar environments. Scientists have coined the term extrasolar space weather to describe this concept. The Earth can be affected by space weather caused by the Sun's activities in our solar system. The Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, is a spectacular light show that occurs close to Earth's poles when the Sun releases a burst of energy. Scientists speculate that an aurora is produced on the star YZ SETI as a result of interactions with the planet. Scientists believe that YZ SETI B is the most promising candidate for a rocky exoplanet with a magnetic field to date. More detections of signals consistent with magnetic fields may be possible with the help of new radio telescopes set to go live this decade. Determining whether or whether rocky, Earth-like exoplanets actually have magnetic fields is important for the hunt for possibly livable or life-bearing worlds in other solar systems. Meanwhile, a new effort to locate aliens involves monitoring for radio pulses emanating from the galactic core. Pulsars are stars that naturally emit narrow frequency pulses. These pulses are also exploited intentionally in technologies like radar. These pulses are easy to detect since they are not masked by the ambient radio noise in space, making them a promising lead in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. A recent paper details this alien hunting method with Cornell University graduate student Akshay Suresh at the helm. Suresh and his team created software to pick up on these narrow frequencies by analyzing data from known pulsars. These bands are even narrower than those utilized by conventional FM radio stations, covering only roughly a tenth of the spectrum. Using this technique, the researchers looked over data collected by the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia. Up until recently, the primary focus of Radio SETI has been on the hunt for continuous signals. The research conducted by SETI reveals the incredible energy efficiency of a train of pulses as a way of long-distance interstellar communication. This is the first extensive effort to look for these signals, and it's a big deal. The astronomers are tuning into the galactic core because of the high concentration of stars and the possibility of finding habitable exoplanets there. Furthermore, intelligent aliens at the center of the Milky Way would have the ability to broadcast messages that would reach a wide variety of planets due to their advantageous location. Since it is highly uncommon for narrow bandwidths and repeating patterns to arise naturally, this would be an excellent method for aliens to show themselves. The technique employs an algorithm that can examine 1.5 million samples of telescope data in just 30 minutes. Researchers claim the speed of the system will assist in enhancing future searches, even if they did not find any indicators in their initial search. In 1933, when the New York Times initially reported on mysterious radio waves coming from space, they qualified their report with the phrase, no evidence of interstellar signaling. Radio waves, like other forms of energy and light in the cosmos, such as visible light and X-rays, are constantly bombarding Earth. Massive, dished-shaped antennas are incredibly useful for detecting radio waves because they reveal intriguing, extremely distant occurrences like star explosions and black holes devouring cosmic dust that we would not be able to observe otherwise. They fit the mold, and they aren't an effort to establish contact with alien civilizations. The immense dark void of space may appear to be strangely silent. Visible light provides an accurate perspective. The radio spectrum, however, reveals a fantastically chaotic cosmos. There is usually not much of a mystery to radio waves. On the other hand, they are illuminating. They show us aspects of the deep, ever-changing cosmos that we would otherwise miss. Out here on a spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy, these radio waves shed light on our own cosmic story by illuminating the origins of neighboring galaxies and stars. If aliens exist, why haven't they visited Earth yet? For decades, scientists have been stumped by this topic. 
But recently, two academics have proposed a sobering answer. It may be inevitable that advanced civilizations will either stagnate or perish. According to the new theory, advanced spacefaring societies will inevitably face an energy dilemma as their populations and technologies continue to expand. The eventual collapse is inevitable. The researchers concluded that rejecting a concept of unyielding growth in favor of maintaining equilibrium was the only viable option, albeit at the expense of a civilization's capacity for interstellar expansion. The discussion aims to provide an answer to the Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox, so named after the casual lunchtime musings of Nobel Prize winning physicist Enrico Fermi, highlights the discrepancy between the vast size and age of the universe, which imply that it should be teeming with advanced alien life, and the lack of evidence that extraterrestrials exist anywhere in sight. Fermi may have said, so where is everybody? The study's authors, astronomers Michael Wong of the Carnegie Institution for Science and Stuart Bartlett of the California Institute of Technology, hypothesized that Civilizations either collapse from burnout or redirect themselves to prioritizing homeostasis, a state where cosmic expansion is no longer a goal, making them difficult to detect remotely. The two researchers arrived at their theory after reading about studies of superlinear growth of cities, which posit that cities expand and consume more energy exponentially as their populations grow, eventually reaching crisis points, or singularities, that trigger rapid crashes in growth followed by an even more precipitous, potentially civilization-ending collapse. They postulate that once a civilization reaches a condition that can be defined as one virtually connected global city, it will experience an asymptotic burnout, an ultimate crisis in which the timescale of the singularity interval becomes smaller than the timescale of innovation. Due to their wildly unsustainable energy dissipation, researchers believe that near-collapse civilizations would be the easiest for humanity to detect, raising the possibility that many of humanity's earliest detections of extraterrestrial life may be of the intelligent but unwise variety. A homeostatic awakening, in which a civilization shifts its production away from limitless growth across the stars and towards societal well-being, sustainable and equitable development, and harmony with its environment, is proposed as a means by which such societies might avoid extinction. Such societies might not give up space exploration entirely, but they also wouldn't grow to sizes that would make contact with Earth likely. The study authors highlight several examples of human mini-awakenings that helped solve global crises on Earth, including the decrease in nuclear weapons stockpiles from 70,000 to below 14,000, the cessation of the expansion of the ozone hole by prohibiting the release of chlorofluorocarbons, and the international whaling moratorium that went into effect in 1982. The scientists are quick to point out that their proposal is merely a hypothesis based on the observation of laws that appear to govern life on Earth and is meant to provoke discussion, introspection, and future work. Their theory joins a plethora of other scientific and popular explanations for why we haven't made contact with extraterrestrial beings, such as the difficulty of interstellar travel, the possibility that aliens are already among us, or the possibility that we were simply created at an inopportune time in the history of the universe. There is also the possibility that a signal transmitted by an advanced race could take as long as 400,000 years to reach its destination, which is much longer than the time humans have had to search the skies. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.